Hello world, Noah here. Just a few days ago, Oracle released Java 10, the latest version of Java at the time of this video. And this came as a surprise to me, uh, because Java 9 had just been released a few months ago, and Java 9 itself had been delayed for quite a while, at least six months. Um, but this is because Oracle has switched to releasing new versions of Java every six months. So six months from now, you can expect Java 11 and Java 12 six months after that. And this is great because it means that Java will be getting new features on a regular basis, and we won't have the fiasco uh, like Project Jigsaw, which of course delayed Java 9 by quite a while. So that brings us to this video. We're gonna take a look at what's new in Java 10. And as you can expect, there's not a ton new because it's only been a couple months since Java 9, but there are a couple of things worth talking about. Uh, you can look through the list of Java enhancement proposals or JEPs uh, that were accepted, and you'll notice that most of them uh, are behind the scenes. So for example, uh, making the garbage collector um, a lot more performant by parallelizing it, that's great. And even something as exciting as changing the versioning scheme to accommodate the six month release cycle. Very exciting. Uh, but there is one thing that is definitely worth taking a look at. It's pretty much the one uh, main user facing uh, feature. And it's local variable type inference, JEP286. And so this is what we're going to be talking about today. We're gonna to be talking about how this works inside of Java 10. Now, local variable type inference basically adds the keyword var so that instead of having to specify the type of variable when you declare a variable, you can instead just write the word var, and Java in most cases is smart enough to figure out which type of variable you are referring to. Uh, now we're going to take a look at an example of this, and we're going to look at some of the quirks uh, that are associated with this, but before we do, you have to make sure that you have uh, the Java development kit 10 installed. So uh, you're going to want to go to this link, which will be in the description, to download the JDK 10, uh, accept the license agreement, and pick your uh, platform, download it, let it install, and uh, then when you're done, you can continue on. So for this video, I'm going to be using uh, IntelliJ. Um, although this feature is very new, because Java 10 was just released a few days ago, uh, IntelliJ does support it. So if you're watching this video close to its release date, there's a chance that uh, your IDE might not support the feature. It might uh, mark it as if it's an error, even though it's really not. Um, but if you use IntelliJ, uh, the latest version, then it should work for you. So you're going to want to create a new project, and under the project SDK, at least for me, I can hit new, um, and it will go to the Java JDK-10, and the home folder right there, I hit open, and you'll see it recognizes Java version 10. So I'll hit next, next, and I'm going to call this Java 10, and it's going to go ahead and create the project for me. Okay, so this project is now running, uh, or will now run with the Java 10 SDK. And you'll notice that it's going to take a second to index. While it does that, I'm going to do command semicolon or control semicolon. And you'll notice that although the project SDK is set to 10, uh, these uh, language features only go up to Java 9 because um, uh, IntelliJ has not received an update yet. So when it does, this won't be such an issue. Uh, but for now, it might be. Okay. So, let's go ahead and create a new class. I'm just going to call this class Java 10 to put my examples in. And we'll go ahead and make a main method, and that's where we will do all of our work. So, the first thing we'll do is let's actually just use the var keyword for something pretty simple. So I could declare a variable int x equals 10, right? But if you look at this and you see, you know, it's a variable called x and its value is 10, you know, you should be able to look at this and say that it's going to be an integer. And in most languages, uh, you know, you're able, the language is able to figure out that by 10, you of course mean an integer. And now Java is able to do that too. So I can replace the keyword int with the keyword var. Now you'll notice that I get a red line there in IntelliJ, but if I hover over that and do Alt-Enter, you'll see it will give me the option to enable support for beta Java version. 
Now again, once IntelliJ gets updated, you won't have to do this, but for now you do. So I'm gonna enable support. It's gonna ask me to accept everything and I'm gonna hit accept. And then the error goes away and you'll see that var is now highlighted just like a regular old reserved word. And you'll notice if I hover over x, it's pretty small so you might not be able to see it, but it says int x equals 10. So basically Java is able to infer that by 10 you're actually talking about an integer, and so it works as you'd expect. And I'll go ahead and print out x, and I'll run this program. And you'll notice uh, that in the output, it outputs 10. So there's no compile error, there's no runtime error, not that there would be, and it works exactly as you would expect it to work. So that's great. And so uh, now we're going to take a look at some of the sort of quirks or some of these specifics, because when you're just declaring variables like this, it'll work perfectly fine. Um, but there are some other uh, things that you should know. So for example, uh, if you want to declare a variable as final and you want to use the var syntax, it works exactly as you'd think. So final var y equals, um, let's say, hello. And if I hover over this, you'll see it says final string y equals hello. Um, so, of course, it's able to infer that it's a string. And, of course, final means that I can't reassign it. So if I say y equals, you know, empty string or whatever, it will still give me an error. Now, most languages have a separate keyword. So, for example, in TypeScript, you would have uh, const and let. And there's also var, but that's another story. And in Kotlin, you have var and val, and so on and so forth. Um, but in Java, that was not chosen uh, to happen. Now, there is a keyword in Java called const. And uh, although it's a reserved word, it doesn't do anything. And it will always result in a compile time error if you try to use it. So they could decide to repurpose that word uh, to combine final var. So you could just write something like const y equals hello, which in my opinion looks a little bit nicer, but until and unless that happens, you can still use the final modifier in front of the variable, and it'll work just fine. Now, var will also work with array lists. So for example, I could say var uh, names equals new array list type string, and I'll import array list. And names will of course be inferred to be an array list of type string, which is great. And you might be used to writing something like array list string names equals new array list and then including uh, the empty diamond brackets there. But if you're going to use the var keyword, you would kind of want to do it in the opposite way. And of course, I can do names.add and it's going to require me to add a string, right? Because it's an array list of type string. So it'll still work exactly as you expect it to. One interesting thing is that you don't actually have to include a type in the diamond brackets. And if you don't, then it will be inferred to be an array list of type object, as you can see from this pop-up. So if you don't include in the diamond brackets, it'll assume an array list of type object, and that's probably not what you want. So you want to make sure that if you're using the var keyword to include the type in the diamond brackets, or else you might be in for some confusion. Okay, a couple of uh, other things. The first few might be fairly obvious, uh, but you can't declare... Uh, a variable without assigning it, or I guess Y is already used, so I'll call it Z. And you'll notice you get an error on var, and it says cannot infer type var on variable without initializer. Of course, Java has no idea what type Z should be because you never gave it a value, uh, so this will be a compile time error. If you're going to declare a variable without uh, initializing it or without giving it an initial value, then you're going to need to explicitly state the type. And this is true in any language, pretty much any language that supports a keyword like var. So nothing special there. And also if I were to set z equal to null, I'll get the same issue because there's an infinite number uh, of types that z could be uh, because there's an infinite number of object types and any object type could be null. Um, so this doesn't work either. And you'll see the variable initializer is null, so it can't infer the type. So once again, you would have to specify the type of the variable if you are using the var keyword and you're setting it equal to null. Uh, let's also take a look. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to write a method, public static um, void, or we'll say public static uh, int add, int a, int b, return a plus b. So just a very simple add method. Something you'll notice, you can't uh, you know, use the var keyword there. Um, 
because, of course, uh, you know, it doesn't know what type of variable A should be. You're not giving it a value or anything. So for the same reason, you can't use var there. And you also can't use var as the return type, which is kind of a shame because um, I suppose it should be smart enough to figure out that if A is an int and B is an int, then A plus B would be an int as well. Uh, but there can, of course, be more confusing methods uh, where someone might try to return multiple different types, and then that could result in a nightmare. So uh, at least for now and probably forever, you'll have to specify the return type, and you won't be able to use uh, var there. Uh, I'm going to just write another method, public static void greet string name, and I'm just going to print out uh, hello name, and we're going to use that in just a second. Okay, so let's comment that out because it's not going to work. And then let's take a look. Uh, you cannot use the var keyword for lambdas. So for example, if I say var, uh, you know, I don't know, run equals, and it's going to be a lambda like that. So the value of run is a lambda expression that takes no input and simply prints hello and doesn't return anything. But you'll notice that var doesn't work. Uh, because the expression is a lambda, and so you need to ex uh, specify which functional interface you are referring to. Because there's an infinite, there's a potentially infinite number of interfaces that have a method that takes no input and uh, gives no output. Uh, but for example, this does fit the runnable interface. So I can say runnable run equals this, and that will work just fine. Right, but I can't just say var because there could be another interface that looks the same as run. It has the same method signature inside of it as run, and so Java wouldn't be able to tell. And so you have to explicitly specify the type there. This also applies to method references for the exact same reason. So if I said, um, you know, for example, Java 10 greet, so I have a method reference to the greet method, which is right here. And you'll notice that once again, method references require an explicit target type because there's an infinite number of functional interfaces that have a method that takes a string as input or some sort of input and doesn't give any output. One such example of this is the consumer, and this would be a consumer of type string. And so you'll notice that now the error goes away because I explicitly stated um, that this works for a consumer. And if you look at consumer, you'll see that it's one uh, abstract method takes uh, some type and doesn't return anything. And of course, greet takes one input of string, which I specified there and returns nothing. So it fits there. But we can't just use var because there could be another interface that looks the same as consumer, uh, but is different. And then Java wouldn't know which one to pick. Okay, we're almost done. There's just a few more little things that are worth taking a look at when it comes to this. Okay, so uh, you cannot also use var in a class level variable. So for example, public static final, uh, we'll say var width equals 640. So this is a pretty you know, typical thing. You're declaring a constant uh, maybe you're making a graphics program and you have the width is 640, uh, but you'll notice that var gives an error, and the error is, you know, not terribly helpful here, uh, but basically you can't use var, um, you know, at the class level, so I have to actually say int there. I'm not sure why, to be honest, and there's a chance that it could be due to the beta support of Java 10 and IntelliJ, like this might actually be valid in Java 10, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and if it's not already valid, then it could certainly change uh, in the future. But for now, when you're doing a class level variable, you do have to specify the type. And it's not because of these um, uh, modifiers, because if I delete them, you're still going to get the exact same error. So when you're declaring at the class level, you do have to specify the type, at least for now. Um, and the last thing that I'll note, which is kind of funny, is that you can still use var uh, as an identifier, so int var equals 10. I could even write var var equals 10, which looks kind of silly, uh, but this just means that var is, at least right now, not a reserved word in the same way um, that the other reserved words are, because, for example, I can't name this variable int 
because int is a reserved word, and you'll see it gives me a bunch of errors. Uh, but var is not quite a reserved word in the same way, because it'll still um, let me set that variable equal to 10. And what you'll notice, let's just change this back to what it actually needs to be, is that it will still work. It won't, you know, crack. the program will still compile and run, even though I'm using var as a variable name. So in general, you probably want to avoid doing that, um, but it's not going to give you an error, at least for now. And so that's all for this video. We took a look at the var keyword, um, which should hopefully maybe make your code a little bit shorter. Maybe it should make Java a little bit less of a pain uh, to work with. And although it is somewhat limited, it's still a sign that Java is willing to change and adapt to pick up features uh, that most languages have and that programmers take for granted. So it's definitely uh, great to see this feature make it into Java. Again, if you want to read about the other features that made it into Java 10, you can look at the link in the description, uh, but they're all sort of uh, back-end changes, some things that I can't really demonstrate. And to be honest, they're probably not terribly interesting to you, so I'm going to just leave them out of this video. But as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment up with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button. Enjoy Java 10, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.